You know how you always struggle when it comes to learning the muscles of the human body? You try everything. You watch tons of videos online, you make flashcards, you try memorizing these really long, complex names. But no matter what you do, you just can't get it right. Well, in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys some tips on how to make learning anatomy and all the muscles super easy. <laughs> Hey guys, what's up? It's Danny. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys some methods that I've used in the past for learning anatomy and learning all the muscles. I'm currently an athletic training student and about 80% of my coursework revolves around learning and memorizing muscle, how do you, how do you pronounce it? Muscle skeletal anatomy musculoskeletal anatomy. When I first started learning anatomy, it was like super hard, really difficult. I just like never got it right. But through the years, I developed different methods, different techniques, different study habits. And now learning anatomy for me is just a breeze. So hopefully anatomy not only becomes easier to study, but it also becomes more enjoyable as well. I got my friend back here, Bones the Skeleton, which I use quite often to study, but let's just get straight into the video. My first piece of advice when it comes to learning muscle anatomy is to remember O-I-A-N, or origin, insertion, action, and innervation, or nerve. Origin, as the name suggests, is where the muscle originates, where it starts, and then insertion is where it inserts to. Usually the insertion is distal to the origin, which can be seen with the long head of the bicep. It originates on the supraglenoid tubercle, and then it inserts into the radial tuberosity. However, this might not always be the case, and you do have some muscles where the insertion point is superior. For example, you have the sternocleidomastoid, which originates on the sternum and the clavicle, but it inserts superiorly into the mastoid process. Now, something really important to keep in mind when you're learning origin and insertion is that usually muscles originate and insert into bony landmarks. So what does that mean? If you don't know the bony landmarks or where they're located, it's gonna be really hard to like kind of figure out the origin and insertion of the muscle itself. So my advice to that is that before you start learning and memorizing the muscle, learn and memorize the bony landmarks around the area. Once you memorize a skeletal system and know the bony landmarks, it'll be like really easy to like actually pinpoint the origin and insertion which means that learning anatomy will be much more simple. The next thing we have is action. As the name suggests, it is the action of the muscle. Some muscles have like a bunch of different actions, but if you're just starting to learn anatomy, just know like the main actions and the main functions of the muscles. Next, we have innervation or nerve, which is obviously the nerve that supplies movement to that muscle. There are a bunch of different nerves in the human body, but the good thing is that like one nerve might innervate a certain muscle group, so it could be easier to memorize it that way. Nerves also have numerical nerve roots, but if you're just starting off, you might not need to know that. Now, my second tip is to learn and know the actual definition behind a muscle, a bone, or any structure you're learning. When you're first learning the name of a muscle, it might sound really confusing and you might get really sidetracked just trying to like learn the name itself. But if you know the real definition of like the muscle's name and why the muscle got that name, it can reveal pretty much everything about the muscle. For example, let's take a look at the flexor carpi radialis muscle of the forearm. See, at first it might sound really confusing. Flexor, flexor carpi, flexor carpi, flexor carpi, re, re, flexor, and you're just like, you know, freaking out about the muscle name itself. But let's actually break down the name of the flexor carpi radialis muscle itself. So first we have flexor, which means it flexes something. Then we have carpi. Carpi means wrist or wrist bone relating to the wrist, whatever. All you know is that it has to do something with your wrist. Then you have the word radialis, which is just a really fancy way of saying radius or relating to the radial side, which is pretty much like the big thumb side on your forearm or hand. Flexor, we know it flexes. Carpi it has something to do with your wrist. Radialis is something to do with like this side of your forearm. So you put it together, flexor, carpi, radialis. What does that mean? All it does is it flexes your wrist. You guys saw how simple that was by truly dissecting the name of the muscle itself. It reveals so much and it's just such a better habit to get into rather than just like memorizing the name for itself. 
My third tip to making learning muscle anatomy super easy is to draw. I know a lot of you guys might be like, Danny, I suck at drawing. I can't draw for my life. But when it comes to learning anatomy, that does not matter. This little notebook right here is filled with a bunch of muscle drawings that are terrible, but they did get me through all my anatomy courses and they have helped me tremendously when it comes to learning all the muscles. Let me show you guys how bad these muscles look let me see if I could like get the camera to focus on this look at that this is a scapula and that's a humerus does it really look like one not really but guess what it doesn't matter because at the end of the day I was able to memorize the muscle even if you suck at drawing like me when you draw it just gives you like a better visual cue and just makes like memorizing muscle anatomy super easy now the way that I would go about drawing muscles is at first I would draw the individual muscle and then once I knew that muscle really well and I was able to like pinpoint the bony landmarks then I would go into drawing the muscle groups and even your bony landmarks like don't have to look good at all like let me show you guys again these were my bony landmarks. That's all they were, just dots. So I would draw the bone, pinpoint the origin, insertion, write it out here, and that's how I was able to memorize muscles. Eventually, once you start doing this, it is kind of nice to get like a model like this one, which I highly recommend for learning anatomy. But to start off, drawing is all you need. My next tip is for once you know the muscle, you know its origin, insertion, innervation, action, you know how to visualize it, you know where to like pinpoint it, and that next piece of advice is to make flashcards. Let me tell you what I've noticed about learning anatomy. All it takes is two things, understanding and repetition. Once you know that muscle or you know a bunch of muscles from a muscle group, draw out the muscle, label its origin, insertion, action, innervation, make a bunch of flashcards and quiz yourself consistently. If you suck at drawing like I do, make flashcards on Quizlets, use pictures, whatever you have to do to make flashcards, do it. Flashcards are super easy to use. You can study with them anywhere you are. You pretty much have like no excuses for saying you can't study anatomy. Me personally, I like to review about 25 muscles in a day. And then at the end of the week, like on Sunday, I'll go over about like maybe four or five muscle groups depending on how I'm feeling. So learn the muscle, memorize the muscle, and it'll stay in your head for the rest of your life. My next tip, which is something that really helped me, especially when it came to like isolating muscle movement and all that stuff, is to apply muscles to your everyday life. Think about this for a second. We use like all of our muscles on a daily basis. When you apply your anatomy knowledge to your everyday life, it just makes it so much easier to learn muscles, appreciate muscles, and just like memorize them properly. So next time you're at the gym, like doing bicep curls, like think to yourself, like what muscles am I using? What am I like extending? What am I flexing? By doing this, you're also using muscle memories. So think about this. You're using muscle memory to learn about muscles. Use muscle memory, apply anatomy to your everyday life, and it'll be much easier to learn anatomy instead of just like memorizing everything by words. Now my last piece of advice, which might be my best one, even though it might sound a little bit counterintuitive, is to actually learn and not memorize. I know it might sound super weird, but the biggest problem that I see people struggling with, and I even struggled with this myself when I was first like learning anatomy, is that you try to memorize everything instead of actually learning it. You sit down for hours studying, memorizing origin, memorizing insertion, action, innervation, trying to memorize everything. You say to yourself, oh, anatomy is easy because it's only memorizing everything, and then you memorize everything, take the test, get an A, forget about the muscles, or repeat the cycle. But the issue with trying to memorize, like really short term, trying to memorize names instead of actually trying to visualize the muscle, is that on the long run, it just doesn't work. Think about this, you can spend hours and hours just like writing down to memorize like the name of the muscle, origin, insertion, action, innervation, you write it all out and then you memorize it. If you memorize a muscle and all of its features by word and by writing, do you actually know like how to visualize a muscle, where it is on the human body? Or do you just know how to like write it out on a piece of paper? Let's make a bigger example. Let's say you memorize and learn about like 20 muscles. With those 20 muscles, do you actually know them? Like, do you know how to like separate them into muscle groups? Do you know like which one does what action? Or do you just like memorize them to like write it down and get an A on the test? I know it sounds really hard at first, but when I actually started like learning about muscle anatomy, instead of trying to memorize it solely to get like an A on the test, it became so much easier to learn anatomy. 
So next time you're studying anatomy, think about this to yourself. Are you actually studying and learning or are you just trying to like memorize everything? Learn and trust me, you'll go really far. All right guys, that's it for this video. Hopefully you do apply these tips and it makes it easier to learn muscle anatomy or just basic anatomy in general. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel down below to stay up to date with my weekly uploads. That is it for me, but always remember to stay hydrated.